Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Distance is always a factor in law enforcement, something which is sharply pointed up by the scattered and seemingly endless areas which come under the jurisdiction of the highway patrol. With such a large area to cover, routine inspection tours are a necessity. On April 12th, while making such a tour, the head of the highway patrol came upon a hitchhiker. Not an ordinary hitchhiker, for this one was a doctor. He was also on a routine tour. No emergencies except a broken down car. Just a series of house calls, apparently of a minor nature. But the father of the first patient feared otherwise. How long ago did Doc leave, Mrs. Leonard? I see. No, he hasn't called. You think I had a... Well, all right, I'm sure he will. Sorry to trouble you. What did she say? Doc left a long while ago. Should be here by now. I don't know. Look, Fred, Johnny will be fine. Kids are tough. You're getting all excited about nothing. Well, it doesn't look that simple to me. Now, don't go getting yourself upset. Doc will show. You'll see. Oh, Fred, uh, what I was talking about, uh, the money, I know this isn't the right time, but Fred. I've got a sick kid in the other room. I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know where the doctor is. And all you can talk about is borrowing money. Thanks. It's just an advance against my wages. You're taking advantage, Marty. You wouldn't do it if you worked for anybody else. I swear I'll pay it back. Like all the other times? You can take it out of my wages. You know how far behind you are now. What is it with you and money, anyway? You get a lot more than any other foreman, and you know it. Still, you're always scratching. What do you do with your money? Please, Fred. I'm sorry. I guess I'm taking it out on you because I'm worried about Johnny. Here. Thanks. This time, it's just a loan. You'll see. Sure. I better see how the boy is. How you feeling, Johnny? The leg any better? All right, Pop. Fine. Is it any worse? A little bit. It's nothing, honest. Doc Leonard ought to be here real soon now. He'll fix you up in no time. Gosh, Pop, I don't need a doctor. I'm all right. Of course you don't, but we'll let him have a look just to be sure. What do you say? Think you're good enough to take me? Pop, I don't feel like playing. Well, sure, son. Who are we kidding? I'm no match for you anyway. Oh, what did the doctor say? He's not here yet. Well, how does the boy feel? Is there anything I can do? Relax, Doris. He's not your kid. And so it shouldn't make any difference. Is that it, Marty? Look, let's not make a big thing out of it. Is that the way it's supposed to be? Take. Always take and never give. Like you've taken from Fred Bell all your life and never given anything in return. So you're gonna start that again. Let's make it short and sweet. 
I don't owe Fred anything. Not a single thing. We started out together. We wound up different. He owns the ranch. I worked for him. He got luckier than I did. You satisfied? Luckier? What's that mean? It's always somebody else, isn't it? Somebody else's luck or break or fault. It's never you, is it? You don't know what you're talking about. Who do you think you're fooling? Fred Bell because you borrow his money to gamble with? That make you a big man? Look, can't you see you're only fooling yourself? Will you shut up, Doris? Are you afraid, Marty? If you weren't an old friend of Fred's, then what? Where would we go? And who would you have left to blame? Me? I'm better off listening to Fred Bell than I am to you. And just as soon as Doc Leonard says okay, I know where the trout are biting. How does that sound, Johnny? Swell, Pop. Oh, big fellas, too. Real whoppers. Well, we gotta get... Be right back, son. Hey, am I glad to see you, Doc. <sighs> Car trouble, Fred. If it wasn't for Mr. Matthews here, it'd still be waiting there. Oh, uh, Fred Bell, Dan Matthews, Highway Patrol. All right, Mr. Sir. Matthews. Johnny's in there, Doc. Hey, you mind waiting, Mr. Matthews? Not at all. Give me the name and number of your garage. We'll have them pick up your car for you. I sure appreciate it. Sims Garage, the number's 112. If they want more than $5 for it, tell them to junk it. One, one, two, please. Hi. Hello. Is uh, that your car outside? Yeah, I gave the doctor a lift. I'm Dan Matthews, Highway Patrol. I'm Marty Gower, Mr. Bell's foreman. How are you? Oh, excuse me. Sims Garage? I'm calling about Dr. Leonard's car. He had a breakdown on the highway. What? All right, you do that, will you? Must be his little girl. She's gonna get her father out from under a car. Let's have another look at that leg, son. Huh? When did you say you stepped on that nail, Johnny? Day before yesterday. Hmm? It's nothing. It's... How'd you treat the wound, Fred? I washed it good. Put iodine on it. Doc. Oh, fine, fine. Won't be too tough to stay out of school a couple of days, will it, Johnny, huh? What is it, Doc? Fred, I'm gonna give it to you straight because we have no time for tact. We're in trouble. That boy waited too long before reporting the wound. Doc, what is it? What's wrong with it? Gangrene. Gas gangrene. It's a rare form, but it happens. Gangrene? Now listen, Fred. I know how you feel. But if that boy sees you panic, he will too, and he can't afford that. Now please, we're fighting for time. I've got to have a serum, and we're pretty remote here. Until I get that serum, that boy's leg is going to be more painful and more swollen. But what do you do? You just can't... Hey, wait a minute. Get me 314. Druggist. And don't get your hopes up. It's a long shot. Hello, Cully. Doc Leonard here. Have you got a gas gangrene serum on hand? You're looking. Huh? You have? No. No, I can't use it. Sorry. Now, thanks anyway, Cully. I was afraid of that. Expired a year ago. Where can we get that serum, Doc? Clark Medical Center's our best bet. They'd have to put it on a plane to Mason City. Someone'd have to drive it here. It's a long drive. Well, if we're fighting time, let's do it right. Get your hat. Come on. That'll save time all the way around. I think the only way to save time is to rush that boy to the hospital. I wish it were as easy as that, but he can't be moved. It's important that he stay quiet. Doctor, exactly what are his chances? The only real chance we have is that serum. He's got to have it, and he's got to have it in a hurry. In a matter of hours, he'll become toxic, and he'll die. Maybe two, maybe six, but hours. The minute that toxin reaches his nervous system, nothing will help. Well, what do you want me to tell Clark Medical? 
Had Dr. Herbert Bronson put 100 cc's of gas gangrene serum on the plane to Mason City? Somebody will have to be in Mason City waiting for it. I'll do better than that. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters by. Contact Clark Medical. Have Dr. Herbert Bronson put 100 cc's of gas gangrene serum on the first available plane to Mason City. Notify me the plane's ETA. Then have 3822 pick up the serum, deliver it to... Just a minute. Hold it, what? The last three miles has taken a beating from the floods. The back road's a lot faster. If one of us is waiting for him at the Colton turnoff... He's right. Have 3822 meet me at the Colton turnoff with the serum. It's code three all the way. Be sure to notify me the plane's ETA. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four. Ten four. Yeah, you know your way around in an emergency. At least that gives us a chance. Anything else we can do, Doctor? No, I don't think so. I'll have Doris Gower come up here. At least she can help keep the boy calm. Just get back with that serum as quick as you can. I'll start loading the boy up with penicillin. There's really no need for you to make the ride, Mr. Matthews. I could pick up the serum and streak right back here. I know these roads like a book. Fine, then why don't you ride with me? Okay, but uh, weren't you going to wait to find out when the plane gets to Mason City? That's what radios are for. And this is one time nobody could afford to be late. Hop in. Less than an hour later at the Mason City Airport, a highway patrolman awaited the arrival of the desperately needed serum. Once the priceless package was in his hands, his job then became the saving of minutes. As many minutes as he could possibly gain on the 40-mile race to the Colton turnoff. At the designated meeting place, Dan Matthews and Marty Gower waited impatiently. What's keeping them? They could have walked that distance by now. It's a rough road, Fred. Give them time. It's just that everyone's doing something, helping, everyone but me. I don't know what to do. The truth, Doc, is Johnny any worse? I want to know. Now, listen, Fred. One patient is enough. Is Marty here? No. No, where's the serum? The serum's gone. So is Marty. Fifteen minutes later, under the capable treatment of Dr. Leonard, Dan Matthews was able to tell what had happened to him. It was an incredible story, one which left the doctor, Doris Gower, and Fred Bell speechless. But I don't understand. How could a thing like that happen? You know as much about it as I do, Mrs. Gower. It was a rough road. I had my eye on it every second. I didn't see it coming. You say Marty suddenly grabbed the wheel and twisted it to the right, deliberately? It was no accident. I slammed on the brakes, knocked myself out. When I came to, Marty was gone, and so was the serum. But why? Marty wouldn't do a thing like that. Lady, he did it. It's crazy. There's no reason. What did I ever do to him? Wherever he is, he's got Johnny's life in his hand. Doesn't he realize that? Mr. Bell, I'll get on the radio and send for more serum. But the time, you I'll say... I'll call in right away. What are we going to do, Doc? You've got to help, Fred. Now, you go on in there to your boy. Uh, get that look off of your face first. Now, no matter what he asks you, be light and offhand, you understand? You go in too, Doris. But, Doc, it couldn't be true about Marty. Doris, please go in. That serum, Doc, do you really think they'll now, get you? One thing at a time, Fred. What you do in there is important. Fast as possible, 10 4. You order more serum? Yeah. Level with me, Doc. Can the boy last that long? I doubt it. But we haven't any choice. What else can we do? Well, the only thing I can do is try to find Marty Gower. Uh. What is it? 
I'll ask the same question Fred did. What sort of a man would do this? Well, let's ask his other question first. Why? All right, then, why? Well, there's a lot of possibilities. Some of them are pretty rough, but you keep running up against them all the time. Name one that makes sense. Revenge? Fred and Marty have been friends for 11 years. How about money? Why? Oh, Bell's a wealthy man. People have been held for ransom. Why not the same thing with serum if it's badly needed? Oh, no. Well, these are possibilities, and you ask for them. Look, Doc, you and I work a lot alike. You look for symptoms, I look for motives. This time we're trying to beat the clock. Well, that makes it rough. What are you going to do? The only thing I can do, try to find Marty Gower. What is it? His leg. It's so swollen. He... He doesn't complain. Doesn't say a word. Just lies there holding Doris's hand. I'm scared, Doc. I've never been so scared. Everybody's doing all they can, Fred. Matthew's out looking for Marty right now. Doc. You better stay out here for a while. Doc. I'm sorry. What for? You're just a man who's worried about his kid. You know of anything else more logical? Twenty-one fifty to thirty-eight forty. Thirty-eight forty. Come in twenty-one fifty. My ten twenty is two miles past Rollins Fork. You headed this way? Thirty-eight forty. My ETA is less than ten minutes. You know the back road from the Colton Turnoff to the Bell Ranch? Know it well. Meet me one mile into the road from the Turnoff. You're going to be there ahead of me. I have something else to do first. Ten four. Ten four. The close cooperation which exists between various law enforcement bodies is in itself the best guarantee of keeping the peace. And this time was no exception. At the local sheriff's substation, Sheriff John Cook proved to be the single law enforcement officer for the large, sprawling rural area. He was eager to help in any way he could. This kid at the ranch, he's going to die unless we find that serum. Now, before the crack-up, we had the serum in the car along with Gower. Now, Gower and the serum are missing. We've got to find him. That's a terrible thing, Mr. Matthews. Terrible. How about this Gower? You ever had a run-in with him? Has he ever been off base? No. He gambles a little, but that's about all. It's a rough deal, isn't it? No starting place. You've got to make one. That clock keeps moving. What do you want me to do? Well, from the Colton turn off to the ranch. As many men as you've got. Fan them out through the area. See if they can pick up a sign of Gower, a trail, anything. It's a big area. It's going to take time. We're fighting time, Sheriff, especially a 10-year-old kid. I'll get on it right now. OK. Headquarters to 2150. 2155. Have information you requested. ETA of Plain and Mason City is 140. That's NG. Look, run a make on Marty Gar. Get back to me as soon as possible. 10 4. 10 4. Highway Patrolman Abel was waiting when Dan Matthews reached the designated spot on the back road. Matthews quickly filled the patrolman in on Martin Gower's strange behavior. Afraid I can't give you any more on Gower than the sheriff could. Quiet enough, fellow. I never had any beef with him. Nothing else, huh? I know Gower's wife better than I know him. She's a local. Grew up here. Bell and Gower are from up north originally. If it helps any, the wife is a good girl. Intelligent, well-respected. Yeah, I know. I met her. Never figure her getting mixed up in anything like this. How can you figure anybody getting mixed up in a thing like this? Look, here's where we jammed on the brakes. Then we skidded over to here. Now, in this rain, it's anybody's guess. Those could be Gower's footprints caught up into the hills. Now, let's hope not. Only fields and hills in this direction. You need an army to find it. Any 
Any luck? I was just going to ask you that. I got about ten men working in the field now. More as soon as they get here. We're branching off at the turn off and working north, like you said. Well, I appreciate it, Sheriff. As long as you're covering here, there's something I can try. I'll be at the Bell Ranch if you want me. You stay here and give him a hand. Then meet me there. I want you to lie still, son. If you want anything, ask for it. But you need rest, you understand? Yes, boy? What's the matter with me? Am I? You just have a little bug, son. We're gonna knock it on its ear. Why does Pop look that way, then? So scared-like. Well, no father likes to see his son sick in bed. Now, the best way for you to help your Pop is to stay perfectly still and rest. You understand? I want to know where your husband is, where you think he might be found, some of his friends, some of the places he might be. Look, I've got to know this fast. There's no need to tell me how short time is. Well, I, I don't know. This isn't like the city. There's no place to go. Marty's always on the ranch. Look, what you're thinking is wrong. Marty is Fred's friend. He, well, he loves Johnny. He wouldn't do this to him. Thanks, anyway. Don't you see? Marty wouldn't do a thing like this. No. He did this. Anything? Nothing. I know, I know. Don't do that. What is it? Maybe I'm pressing, but I keep thinking of that big rut in the back road. That could change everything. How? Well, maybe Marty saw it before I did, and he yanked the wheel to make me miss it. Well, why would he disappear? Where is he? Well, I got hurt. He could have got hurt, too. He could have been making for right over there. Let's go. But you try over there. Package up the house. I'll take care of him. The package. It's on the way, Gar. Don't worry. <sighs> Broke this on dashboard. Couldn't drive. Couldn't bring you to. Been trying to get package to house. Passing out from pain. Kept trying. Nobody could have tried harder. Nobody. I'm... I'm grateful, Mr. Matthews. I can never tell you how much. No matter what happens in there. Marty Gower deserves all your thanks, Mr. Bell. And look. Everything's gonna be all right in there. Just keep believing that, will you? Ten years old. The package was in good shape. The dry ice held. Doc's sure of it. Doc? It's gonna be rough for a while, Fred, but he'll make it. That's definite. Thank heaven. Can I give you a lift, Doctor? I sure appreciate it. All right, let's go. Watch out for those holes in the road this time, eh, Dan?
Patrol story next week is a very unusual one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, the clowns at the circus, they're real funny. But on the highway, they're murder. This is Roderick Crawford saying see you next week.